imagine you have a heart condition that causes your heart to beat irregularly. This condition, known as an arrhythmia, would require a pacemaker. Your doctor would implant a pacemaker in your body to regulate your heartbeat and ensure that your heart remains happy and healthy. But what happens if the pacemaker fails? The pacemaker errors are serious and can be potentially fatal. Pacemaker errors can cause your heart to beat too fast, too slow, and can cause your heart to spin out of control. In fact, 400,000 pacemaker recalls happened between 1990 and 2000. And of these, over 40% were due to software errors. Now, pacemaker recalls are very different from other part of the recalls. Pacemaker recalls require the pacemaker to be surgically removed and a, and a good one put in its place. And surgery, as we all know, carries great risks. Good morning. My name is Sriram, this is Shilpa, and Vroom. And our project is a pacemaker verification system. Our goal is to test pacemakers and find pacemaker errors before patient implantation. We want to have the realism of clinical trials without the associated risks. So here we have the heart and the pacemaker connected just as they would be in the human body. Now this would be the ideal test scenario, but of course we can't test pacemakers on an actual human heart. So instead, we will use a heart on a chip, which can mimic the heart, and thus we can use to test the entire pacemaker system. So why do we even need a new testing system? Why are our current testing methods good now? So current known testing methods employ open loop testing. And open loop testing means that we take the various heart scenarios, heart conditions, heart arrhythmias, and we throw them at the pacemaker, and we see how the pacemaker responds. And all we do is measure the output of the pacemaker, see does it pace correctly, does it pace incorrectly. So while this tests how the heart affects the pacemaker, it does not test how the pacemaker affects the heart. So how do we catch, for example, a problem where the pacemaker incorrectly paces the heart, incorrectly puts the heart into an unsafe state? So the key idea here is to introduce feedback. We want to see exactly how does the pacemaker <coughs> affect the heart. So we do that in two steps. First is to use our heart on a chip to actually send these various heart scenarios to the pacemaker. The second step is then to feed the output of the pacemaker back into the heart. Thus, this creates our closed loop testing system. So we can see how does the heart affect the pacemaker and how does the pacemaker affect the heart. So how do we actually implement this system? So we begin by implementing this heart on a chip. We then use our custom interface circuit that we designed and connect the heart on a chip to an actual pacemaker, just like this one. We then, use our, our, we then use our user interface, which can do two things. One is to program the heart into these various conditions, various arrhythmias. And the second is to monitor the interactions between the heart and the pacemaker, thus providing our full testing system. So let's now delve into the heart on a chip itself and see how it works. So to be able to model a heart, we first need to understand some biology behind how the heart works. So here you see a picture of a heart. Um, there are four chambers in total, two upper atria, and two lower ventricles. Now what most people don't know is that the heart is actually electrical in nature. That is, there is a self-generating periodic pulse that is produced by this node right here, the FA node. This pulse then propagates throughout the rest of the heart to cause the heart to beat. It is this signal propagation that causes the muscle to contract and, to, and the heart to beat as we know it. Now, if you were to measure the signal from above the, the body, from the surface of the body, you would see this waveform that you've been seeing right here, which is called an ECG signal. So we will now demonstrate to you the implementation of our heart, which you will find it has the ability to embody a, a variety of, body, of heart conditions. This device right here is our heart on a chip. And it is on our project board that is about this size right here. This is a duplicate of the one that is hooked up right now. Our heart is connected to an interfacing circuit to a real pacemaker. For the purposes of this first demonstration of our heart, now once we have a heart on hardware, we can then interface it with a real pacemaker to observe its interactions. <coughs> Over here you see the user interface uh, next demo. pacemaker We'll see exactly how the pacemaker and the heart can talk to each other. <laughs> what we're going to do is start again with a pretty hard scenario that we've had before. The heart is beating at one point, it's beating far too slow. And this is exactly the job that pacemaker is designed to play. So if we turn on our connection to the pacemaker, you will see that the pacemaker is now pacing the heart. So the heart was beating too slow, the pacemaker is kicked in. It's pacing both chambers in the heart, the atrium and the ventricle, causing the pacemaker and the heart to be at 
A bradycardia is, is exactly a nerve the injury that the heart is beating too slowly. And that's exactly what it's doing. The heart rate is too slow. The patient now, tells us to be faster. The waveform has and the heart rate. slowed down. It's a conversation. And the heart rate is as if that is unhealthy. It's a conversation. It's a conversation. What happens when the pacemaker does something that the heart doesn't want? What should it be? And we're going to show such a scenario right here. Now, in addition to selecting a preset of the heart rate, we can also customize the heart rate. What happens when the pacemaker does something that the heart doesn't want? What should it be? As we desire, we can change the timing parameters that are exposed on our unit. We can start in a situation when our heart is beating at 975. A normal sign is when the pacemaker doesn't activate. What we're going to do that is make our virtual heart to our chip and the chip sends a signal back to This is a normal behavior that can sometimes occur in a patient. Right now, only and two of these parameters. And while normally it doesn't do anything, but on the, on the heart itself, there are response. over 50 parameters that are implemented. And what if happens is the sending of this premature ventricular contraction is called a contraction. That's called a cardiologist to create a detailed and accurate custom heart. The pacemaker is now pacing too many times because of the signal and the offset that occurred. And as a result, the heart is now beating at 100 beats. So now that we have seen heart in action, we can delve into how we can actually model and build a virtual heart. So we had seen before that the heartbeat is driven by electrical signals and propagation. So what kind of we results can we model the propagation with a One thing we should point out is that we can only experience these kinds of errors if we have a closed loop system. These, so we can Whenever we have the heart talking to the pacemaker and the pacemaker talking back to the heart in turn, we can see these kinds of feedback loops that, that, that normal testing scenarios where you just reduce. send inputs into and the pacemaker to a full cannot capture. Heart, what we do is link these finite things the idea then is that by showing a previously known error, this endosuit tachycardia, we have shown that we can use different models to perhaps even catch errors that haven't been caught before. HDL code is like the code that you would put on, say, virtual feedback. It is actually the instructions for the actual hardware that is implemented on a hardware program. The idea then is that we want to catch these hazard blocks before patient information. When we have a virtual heart, so it goes to a real one, we want to make sure that bugs aren't found when the patient is already inside. If we can make the system open and standardized, then many different organizations can benefit from a system like this. So let's go over some of them. Imagine, for instance, the FDA, which is the body that is in charge of regulating medical devices. What if they could use this system to make sure that all pacemakers hit a common baseline as to what tests they should pass? Imagine the medical device manufacturers themselves. They can use the system to test various new algorithms that they're implementing for more advanced pacemakers and test it against a variety of different patients without actually causing any physical harm. And finally, consider your cardiologist, who's, who can use this to model your own heart and see that the pacemaker he just bought for you will work exactly how it's supposed to. We've done this project in Beijing as part of the IEEE-R test competition, and we also are a finalist in the IEEE for Change the World competition for this effort. We'd like to thank the following people, including our freshman mentee Simon, for their help in this project. And we want to end on the note that we want our heart to be able to catch the bus, not yours. <laughs> That's the next question. This is a normal behavior that can sometimes occur in a patient. And while normally it doesn't do anything, in this scenario, you're going to see it have grievous consequences. What happens is the sending of this premature ventricular contraction has caused a feedback loop. The pacemaker is now pacing too many times because of the signal and the offset that occurred. And as a result, the heart is now beating at 130 beats per minute. And this loop will never end. And the name is called. So what kind of results can we get out of this? One thing we should point out is that we can only experience these kinds of errors if we have a closed loop system. Whenever we have the heart talking to the pacemaker and the pacemaker talking back to the heart in turn, we can see these kinds of feedback loops that normal testing scenarios, where you just send inputs into the pacemaker, cannot capture. The idea then is that by showing a previously known error, this endless loop tachycardia, we have shown that we can use different models to perhaps even catch errors that haven't been caught before. New algorithms that enter the pacemaker. How do those affect the heart in terms of the feedback loop? This is what our system offers that others do not. The idea then is that we want to catch these kinds of bugs before patient implantation. When we have a virtual heart so close to a real one, we want to make sure that bugs aren't found when a pacemaker is already implanted inside of you. If we can make this system open and standardized, then many different organizations can benefit from a system like this. So let's go over some of them. Imagine, for instance, the FDA, which is the body that is in charge of regulating medical devices. What if they could use this system to make sure that all pacemakers hit a common baseline as to what tests they should pass? Imagine the medical device manufacturers themselves. They can use the system to test various new algorithms that they're implementing for more advanced pacemakers and test it against a variety of different patients without actually causing any physical harm. And 
finally, consider your cardiologist, who's, who can use this to model your own heart and see that the pacemaker he just bought for you will work exactly as it's supposed to. We've demoed this project in Beijing as part of the IEEE R test competition, and we've also are a finalist in the IEEE to change the world competition for this effort. We'd like to thank the following people, including our freshman mentee, Simon, for their help in this project. And we want to end on the note that we want our heart to be the one catching the bugs, not yours. <laughs> That's the pacemaker verification. Thank you.